Hey Now. Hey Now. And welcome back to the show where two childhood friends discuss their favourite childhood movies. I'm Emily Sandford. And I'm Barney Lee. And whether it's iconic lines, musical moments, or just questionable outfit choices, the films we'll be talking about on our show are unique in their own way. And this week, we'll be discussing... The Devil Wears Prada. Warning, this episode contains nostalgia and big love for Dolce and Gabbana. Uh Uh-huh. Can you please spell Gabbana? Hello? (laughs) The Devil Wears Prada. (sighs) I was watching it when I was prepping for this episode. I looked down in in my sweatpants and big top and I thought, oh, I'm disgusting. (laughs) Sorry, Miranda. (laughs) 2021 is like year of the sweatpants what what would they call it leisure lux in runway i'm sure there'd be an eight page spread about it exactly i feel like homer simpson i've worn the same outfit for (laughs) for a whole year leggings and a top cute fine fine i mean i'm sure the entire universe has watched this film but for anyone who needs a reminder the devil wears prada is about a young woman called andy Sachs who is hired as a personal assistant to this powerhouse of a fashion magazine editor and it's just a job that becomes nightmarish and she struggles you know all the way through yeah it's a real insight into the fashion industry and apparently Miranda Priestley is based on Anna Wintour right and for those of you who aren't into fashion she's the only person on this planet who can wear sunglasses inside except for Snoop Dogg Mm. (laughs) She is the editor-in-chief of Vogue magazine. Yes. Oh, well, I have heard some stories from my sister who also works in the magazine industry. It sounds intense, to say the least. Mm -hmm. But if it gets you access to the closet, then worth it? Yeah. So this film came out in 2006. It was directed by David Frankel. Mm -hmm. And it was based off a novel of the same name by Lauren Weisberger. It topped the New York Times charts. Lauren actually had a cameo in the movie. She plays the nanny of the twins. So, you know, you see them reading the Harry Potter manuscripts on the train for like two seconds. Mm -hmm. Just to the left of them is their nanny just kind of like sitting in the seat. That is Lauren Weisberger. What? So that's, I love that. I think that's, that's a great sweet. fact. Yeah. The budget for this movie was $35 million. Insane. But don't worry, because in, in the film's opening weekend, it made back the money. Anne Hathaway plays Andy Sachs. She recently appeared on an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race because she was coaching the queens for an acting challenge. And she dropped the bomb that she was maybe 10th in line to get this role like the execs really weren't considering her they actually they wanted rachel mcadams to play andy but she turned it down several times and when anne hathaway was meeting one of the fox executives um the exec had one of those little sand zen gardens on their desk and anne traced the words hire me into the sand hoping that the exec would see it after their meeting which i love that is- shoot your shot like you might as well 100 percent, and it worked so Legendary. i think fine that's iconic Stanley Tucci accepted his role of Nigel 72 hours before he started filming his part. And did you know, this is actually a fun fact, Graham Norton, yeah. the Irish chat show host in the UK. And Eurovision god. Yeah, he was actually up for Stanley's role as well. No. But they decided that they preferred Stanley, <gasps> which I'm kind of happy about. Like, I'm much more of a Jonathan Roscow. Really? Yeah. Oh, I like yeah. Graham, but I couldn't see him in this role. I think, like, Nigel's a bit more serious and, like, empathetic and all that stuff. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if you would have got that. But, yeah. Um, that's hilarious. Yeah. I love that. There was also this really fun fact that I love when Anne Hathaway and Meryl Streep met for the first time. Meryl told Anne, you know, I think you're perfect for the role and I'm so happy that we get to work together on this. But I warn you, that is the last nice thing I'm going to say to you. She wanted to like completely soak up the character of Miranda Priestley and just like not even look in Anne Hathaway's direction at any point off set. Yeah. And that's what happened. So the whole time they were filming the movie, Meryl Streep was horrid to Anne Hathaway. I can think of no one better than Anne Hathaway to play that role. 
to be honest. I mean, she's incredible. She most recently starred in the reimagining of the film The Witches. Yes. Um, which I haven't seen. The uh, book is scary. I mean, I can't even look at the book cover, <laughs> let alone screenshots. <laughs> a boy turns into a mouse. Oh. Oh. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, not into it. Not, not into, into it. that. And was also in, you know, stuff like Bride Wars and she played Catwoman and she earned her first Oscar in Les Miserables. She was also in um, Ocean's 8. Yes. Which was so good. It was good. She did that film with Rebel Wilson as well. Called so, Hustle. Yeah. I feel like that's in her agent's description all the time, like plays fraudsters or does makeover scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We should probably talk about Meryl next. Yes. Meryl Streep. Ugh. Honestly, God herself. Uh, elegant, graceful, yeah. living legend. The role of Miranda Priestly was originally written for Glenn Close. <gasps> so the woman who plays Cruella in 101 Dalmatians, yeah. but she turned it down because she didn't want to always play like the villain role. Right. But you missed out on money. <laughs> yeah, apparently Meryl Streep was given $4 million for this role. I could really do with $4 million. I know. She was in Little Women in 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, she dominated her role in Mamma Mia. Honestly. She was amazing. I'm so glad she came back for the second one as well. Mm-hmm. Also, I love that Meryl reunited with Emily Blunt for two movies, Into the Woods. Yes. And Mary Poppins Returns, which is really great. I love that there's this... Connection. Connections. There are some more connections as well Mm -hmm. within this film. Do you want to speak on that? I do want to speak on that. If we can go into Emily Blunt, Stanley Tucci is married to her sister, Felicity. That blows my mind. So she introduced them, which is so cute. At their wedding. Yeah. Sorry, at Emily Blunt and John Krasinski's wedding. And apparently this is a really nice fun fact of the film. John Krasinski, this is on IMDb, (laughs) has claimed to have seen the film 75 times. As he should. Yeah. They teamed up for the horror movie A Quiet Place Mm. and they are, at the time of recording, about to release the sequel. A couple other people of note to talk about in the cast. Andy's boyfriend Nate was played by Adrian Grenier. I know him from the film Drive Me Crazy with Melissa Joan Hart. And Melissa and Adrian both cameoed in the music video... You Drive Me Crazy by Britney Spears. <gasps> a few cameos in this film as well, but the one that I really enjoyed was Giselle playing the uh, runway magazine employee, Serena. Yes, I really want to read her book, Lessons, My Path to a Meaningful Life, which loads of people wow. talk about. Yeah. Oh, good. Good for her. Mm. Actress, supermodel, author. Exactly. So she was offered to be in this film because... She's written about in the actual novel, but she said she didn't want to appear in the movie as a model. She wanted to appear as just like a normal character. So they just made her into Serena. I love that. Emily's little like co-bitch. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, without further ado, let's move into our first category, Best Supporting Character. By all means, move at a glacial pace. You know how much that thrills me. (laughs) Right, well, let's talk about Best Supporting Character. It's difficult because this film has so many unlikable characters. Honestly, if we had a category which was Worst Supporting Character, I feel like we'd be like, ding, 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 ding. I don't know. Maybe we can start with James Holt, who was like one of the designers. I just want to give him a mention because he's kind of sexy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So sweet. He's kind of got like Reggie Jean... Bridgerton vibes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I see that. Yeah, very sweet. Although he did kind of try and like drug Andy by giving her that punch drink. Oh, did he? Remember, he was like, oh, she'll have the punch. And then Christian comes over and he's like, oh, you know, you're brave. Last time I had that drink, I like woke up like naked. Oh. Um, And she's like, oh, okay. And puts it back down. (laughs) I'm sure it wasn't like malicious. He was just offering her a drink. But like, yeah, Yeah. I thought that was quite funny. But I can imagine one of those fancy evening parties in some like really rich apartment would just be full of cocaine. Oh my God. Yeah. When she walks in and she's walking down the hallway and it's just like three couples kind of like chatting in dark corners. It felt very like swingers-y. But actually it was... Just a little soiree. Yeah. Luckily. Andy's got three friends in this film. <sighs> Lily, 
her boyfriend Nate mm-hmm. and Doug. I think Doug can get a little mention here as a supporting character because he's kind of nice. He knows about fashion, you know, he's just an innocent corporate research analyst, <laughs> which they rip him for. Hey, he's getting his coin. He's getting his like, coin. Leave him be. I mean, I have many things to say about that friendship group, but we'll get into that a bit later. But I do think you're right. I think Doug is the lesser of all evils. <laughs> he's nice. And when they're at the gallery and Lily says to him, oh, I've got someone you want to meet. And he's like, Ooh, art and sex, lead the way. (laughs) So who else do you think could be in this category? Okay, well, I think you're going to disagree with me, but I want to give a shout out to Emily. (gasps) No. (laughs) Okay. She gives my name a bad name. (laughs) Okay, no, no. Because, you know, like everyone else at Runway, Emily was... Just trying to do her high-pressure job in that toxic environment. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't, you know, take away from the fact that she was still being mean to Andy. But let's be honest, she is the only Emily that deserved to be in Paris. (laughs) Sorry, Netflix show. You were so shit. (laughs) Did you watch it? I did. I don't hate it. I mean, like, her love interest is a sexy chef. Um, Count me in. (laughs) So should we talk about who we think is the best supporting character? I mean, I feel like there's nobody else. It is, of course, Nigel. Nigel. Our least problematic angel and the actually only true, kind and professional human being at Runway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he was a little bit judgmental, but he does give her good advice. He gives her like a reality check, but not in a mean way. Mm. You know, the way he handles his job being given to someone else. Pretty incredible. I don't think I would have the same amount of grace and decorum as as Nigel did. I think I would have maybe flipped a table. And I would really love for him to get me some clothes in a fashion cupboard. (laughs) Yes! Wouldn't that be amazing? Like, Can you do that? Like, surely those clothes are there for a reason. They're not just like, oh, wear whatever. Do you know whether you can take samples or not? Do you remember in season one, I told you about my friend who worked at Jimmy Choo? Mm. And... Who shamed you for saying Monolo Blanc. Yeah, instead of (laughs) Manolo. Manolo. (laughs) She got me a Jimmy Choo card holder. Wow. Yes. Yeah, like she got loads of free shoes and Mm. she just got me this really nice like black patent Jimmy Choo card holder. And I was like, (laughs) okay. Great. They didn't know. (laughs) They do now. (laughs) But bless her, she actually left the fashion industry because from what it sounds like, it's exactly like the vibes that are at Runway. Oh, no. Can I say that? I mean, you you can watch one episode of Ugly Betty and you already get the idea. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this Miranda Priestly is apparently based off Anna Wintour. So is that actually what it's like at Vogue? Oh, (laughs) there goes our cover sheet at Vogue. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to have to cancel our cover shoot at Vogue. Oh, well. Fine, we'll have to settle with Vogue Germany. (laughs) Okay, so now we're going to discuss most iconic outfits. Now, Barney and I are like fashionistas, so we're going to be really good at this category. Oh, yeah. I've got my blue eyeshadow at the ready and my tiny handbag. Oh, yeah. That can only fit your phone in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got boots on that go up to my ears. (laughs) What? (laughs) Ow, my earlobe's caught in the zip. Um, well, okay, I think we need to start with Andy because we have two very different Andys. We have Andy pre-makeover, Andy post-makeover and that outfit that she chooses to wear during her runway interview, whew, we have a corduroy beige jacket. With the brown buttons, mm-hmm. a purple jumper underneath that. She's got a scarf, trousers, okay. and it does not look great. But she's also got the satchel. <gasps> oh, that bloody satchel emily has that amazing line as uh, andy's walking to miranda's office she grabs the satchel from andy and goes this is foul don't let her see it and throws it across the room 
She gets absolutely murdered. Oh no, my newspaper clippings. She's like, oh my God, HR have got a funny sense of humor. And you know on TikTok, I don't know if you've seen this, that like Revlon hairbrush blow dryer that's yes. been going around. Yes, she yes. needs that. <gasps> Sorry. With Frizzy Maguire right oh, here. Honestly. It's kind of like Mia Thermopolis pre makeover as well. A hundred percent. So she's somehow managed to get the job after Emily's been like, Andy, you know, <laughs> come back here, you know, rolls her eyes and like brings her back in. On her first day, she decides to wear like this bulky blue jumper like she's got black tights on almost like a gray tartan skirt that goes just below her knee yeah and then she's got those chunky like black loafer shoes that your mum would make you wear to school yeah you know? like did she just escape an amish cult like what <laughs> where did she get these from where is this outfit from it's not cute it's a choice and she has the audacity to laugh during that meeting. And I mean, we'll get into that meeting. And also, I don't know if you felt this on your first day of new jobs, the amount of work that has to go into like picking an outfit beforehand. I've definitely felt that pressure. For the first day. Yeah. So was that her trying to make a good impression? I don't know. Loads of fashion designers obviously allowed their actual clothes and accessories to be used in the movie. Sure. So this made it the most expensive costumed film in history. Mm. Like it was literally like a million pounds spent on the clothes alone, which they auctioned for charity. And the movie's costume designer, Patricia Field, was the costume designer on Sex and the City. So I love yeah. that. It, that was a really Ooh, good choice. I like that. Yeah. Yay, Patricia. Woohoo! We start to see some variety when there's that amazing fashion montage when Andy's kind of running across town, running errands, and, you know, they'll do a really cool transition where, like, a taxi will run in front of the camera and when the taxi leaves the frame, mm-hmm. she's in a completely different outfit. Oh, that white coat. And this is going to sound bizarre, but that checkered Baker Boy hat. It was such a look. I don't know about you. I found that Andy kind of made a few questionable outfit choices after she had her big makeover Mm -hmm. the one that sticks in my mind is when andy's dropping off the book at miranda's for the second time and she strolls into the house she's wearing from head to toe baker boy hat with her hair up a white shirt with this black off the shoulder jumper on top yes with the chunky chanel pearl necklace necklaces And then I didn't quite see, was it trousers or jeans? No, it was trousers. On Instagram, I follow loads of like mold blogs. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And there's some really nice outfits on it. You think like, yeah, I would definitely wear that. That looks really like chic, elegant, timeless, like sophisticated, cool. That's what I love. But I definitely feel like sometimes when I flick through Vogue, if ever I flick through Vogue, Mm -hmm. or like my mum's red magazine or something like that, when it goes to like, oh, what to wear for spring, summer? And you look at some outfits mm-hmm. and you think, what the heck is that? And it's just like, how do people have two grand to spend on that? I don't know. Yeah, I, God, I completely agree. Like, are we supposed to be impressed with this outfit? Like, sometimes they're so over accessorized. I get that, like, you know, runway clothes and whatever are super editorial and they have to kind of be filtered down to like what actual day to day wear is. But sometimes. It's just beyond what you could ever wear. So yeah. I don't get it. The one outfit I do like that she wears is obviously when she goes to the benefit and she's wearing that nice old chic black dress. Oh, that was really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, she looks so sophisticated in that. Before we talk about most iconic outfit, I need to name and shame Andy's Parisian toe ring. Oh! That is peeking <laughs> out the covers after she spent the night with Christian. Oh! I know it's 2006, but that is still no excuse. I know, a toe ring? Hideous. Honestly, there is no need for that at all. No. (laughs) So the most iconic outfit has to be when Emily and Serena are kind of like talking at her desk about Andy, like how clueless she is. And Serena's like, we were in the beauty department and she held up this eyelash curler and said, what is this? And then they both start laughing. And then Emily's like, I just knew that when the first moment I saw her, she was going to be a complete and utter disaster. It's almost like the perfect outfit doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because at that point, Andy walks through the glass doors and it's the first time you properly see her made over. Oh my God, I live for moments like that in films. And yeah. she just looked so cool. Like yes. she's got the really cool 
sleek back hairstyle. Yeah. She's got all the, I want to say Chanel jewelry. Mm -hmm. She's got like the Chanel coat on. Right. And skirt. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's just a vision, like just so chic. And Emily, I think you're missing <gasps> the most iconic part of the most iconic outfit. Mm -hmm. The Chanel boots. Oh, oh I wish I could afford Chanel boots. Oh. I actually bought two really nice pairs of knee-high boots from Henny's. <gasps> Are those the Chanel boots? No, Henny's. <laughs> <laughs> that was the alternative scene yeah. that they had to cut out. <laughs> if me and Barney recreated it, I'll take a picture of them and put them on our Instagram. Yes. <laughs> of me Ooh. wearing them. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing you, else? Yeah. <laughs> So now... <laughs> wow, let me try that again. So next, let's talk about best musical moment. I think we should keep this in. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Okay, so we're going to talk about best musical moment. There's no big performance number, but the soundtrack is pretty darn good, if you ask me. Yeah, it's very fashion-y. A song that really encapsulates this film for me is Madonna Vogue. Oh, yeah. It's really cool vibes. And it features when Andy's had the makeover from Nigel and she's waiting for Nate outside his restaurant. Yeah. And she's like leaning against the car. So he doesn't realise it's her at yeah, the Yeah, it's such a departure from frumpy Andy. <laughs> exactly. He kind of like looks her up from like... Her boots up. Yeah. He's like, whoa. And she goes, what do you think? And he's like, I think we better get out of here before my girlfriend sees me with you. <laughs> what are you saying? No, that is a great soundtrack. Another Madonna song, Jump, features a little bit earlier on. Okay. Um, and that's a really fun song as well. Obviously, the music supervisor loves Madonna. Mm -hmm. We also have, I don't know if you caught it, in when Andy and Christian are on a date in Paris, you can hear La Vie en Rose play in the background. Oh, I like a bit of La Vie en Rose. Yeah. La Vie en Rose. Very nice. Thank Very you. Very nice. I love that. I also think that a great musical moment that appears throughout the film is the ringtone that Andy has on her little, is it a sidekick phone? I can't even remember what kind of phone she has. Yeah, it is definitely a bit of musical artistry. And if you need a reminder, and this will haunt your dreams because it, it, I've thought about it non-stop it sounds a little something like this oh. Oh. oh hey miranda oh my god do you remember when my ringtone was spice girls wannabe <laughs> once <laughs> and i got prank called at 3 a.m and i woke up to mel b laughing <laughs> i've never been more scared in my life like imagine waking up to <laughs> I would wet the bed. That is terrifying. We should also talk about the actual incidental music that mm -hmm. features us. It's music that's been specifically created for The Devil Wears Prada. It's kind of Miranda's kind of theme music. Mm -hmm. um, we first hear it when Miranda's walking in the runway office <gasps> and it's just kind of chaotic. Everyone's running around scrambling, trying to make the place look nice, make sure that her desk is prepared. She's got her water. She's got her magazines laid mm -hmm. out. It invokes... Just absolute anxiety listening to it. Definitely. Theodore Shapiro, he composed this bit of music. Yeah. And obviously for copyright reasons, we can't play the whole thing. But do you have a bit of this music just so I, people can remember? I do. What it is? Because it doesn't have lyrics, but it's like that real anxiety inducing, like intense. Ah! Everyday moments. Like, you know, you're watching TV at home. You hear your mum pulling up in the driveway and you haven't defrosted the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Your mum calls, says she's going to be five minutes. You got to WhatsApp your brother to say, unload the dishwasher. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I actually feel very sweaty yeah. just listening to that. My fight or flight is like, whoop. <laughs> 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 anyway, the best musical moment has to be, it's the opening sequence. Nothing really quite encapsulates this film than the Katie Tunstall classic, Suddenly I See. And you know, all know the one. It's like... Her face is a map of the world. Oh, it's a map, map of the world. world. Yeah, no, that is the song that I would most align with this film. Because it just kind of sets the tone. You know, Katie Tunstall, peak 2006. Mm -hmm. Like, iconic. That song is just incredible. And very deserving of best musical moment. 
I mean, next time I have an interview, I'm playing that. Yeah. Get ready. Yes. It's like the perfect hype you up song, like ready mm-hmm. for anything. I feel the same way with, this is so rogue, the Saturdays up. <laughs> I'm ready for the lift. And I'm like marching down the street, hands in my resume, like, sir, this is a pretzels truck. <laughs> Am I hired? <laughs> Problem, Ariana Grande is a real one that I like to like oh. strut along the street to. Yes. Mm. I mean, you could strut along to anything. Anytime I listen to music, I'm, oh, I'm in my own music video. Exactly. Agnes, release me. Jamelia, superstar. Oh. Javine, real thing. Or, you know, someone from this century. I don't know why I'm like, <laughs> so in the past. Okay, so now we're doing best quote. <laughs> there are so many amazing quotes. It's pretty much every Emily line and every Miranda line. <laughs> oh, 100%. Like, I have nailed that icy bitch tone after oh watching this film. Gosh. So good. I mean, go on, hit us. Hit us with okay, them. on Andrea's first day, and obviously we've just played the music, like the hectic music that has explained, like everyone's going into meltdown because she's arriving early. And Nigel's like, oh, She's not supposed to be here until nine. And then Emily goes, her driver just messaged her facialist ruptured a disc. God, these people. (laughs) No compassion at all for anyone. So, so good. I mean, Emily just has gems. Like when Andy's asking if she can leave early. What Do you have a prior commitment? Some hideous skirt convention you have to go to? (laughs) Literally so, so mean. The back and forth that Andy and Emily have is incredible. Like Andy's leaving and she says to Emily, wish me luck. And Emily, without even looking at Andy goes, no, shan't. (laughs) (laughs) And also on her first day, she gets like a phone call really early in the morning and Andy's like, hello? Like half asleep. She's like, Andrea, Miranda decided to kill the autumn jacket story for September and she's pulling up the Sedona shoot for October. You need to come into the office right this second and pick up her coffee order on the way. Now? Like looking at the clock, she's like, now get a pen and write this down. I want one no foam skim milk latte with an extra shot and three drip coffees with room for milk. Searing hot. And I mean hot. (laughs) (laughs) When I interned for this presenter his order was an extra hot double shot cappuccino like i feel like you're just adding extras for the sake of being extra (laughs) what is wrong with a normal latte or just like an oat milk latte if you're going to be a bit bougie (laughs) before we move on to miranda i also just wanted to quickly get in emily's reaction when she finds out andy went upstairs into miranda's house to drop off the book yeah and emily says You went upstairs. Uh, Why didn't you just climb into bed with her and ask for a bedtime story? You know, even at the beginning when she's like, oh, human resources have a sense of humour. You know, that I can't even talk about. Yeah, and she's like like, pointing at Andy. Yeah, like, what would you do if you were Andy? You'd be like, uh... (sighs) Emily Blunt must have had the most fun playing that role. Yeah. I thought, oh, she did such a good job. And it's really funny because in the book, Emily is American and Miranda is English, but they swapped the two. Oh, okay. And I think Emily Blunt thought that Emily, the character, would feel like there's more more of a hierarchy between her and Andy if uh, Emily had a British accent Mm -hmm. and she just felt superior. Yeah. Oh, this is the Queen's accent. I don't (laughs) know. The queen of this office, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the queen, maybe we should get into some of Miranda's lines. Yes. And apparently Meryl Streep based her character's icily calm, quiet voice on Clint Eastwood. Okay. Yeah. So this is a fact. Wow. What just kind of like never shouts, just like total like calm. Calm. Monotone. Yeah. Why is no one ready? I yeah. say that all the time. <laughs> That's you, like, waiting for me to get ready on a night out. <laughs> Girls, we take extra time. We've so got to long. think about our male friends, okay? So I think we can start with when, obviously, she's interviewing mm. Andy. And she's like, and you have no sense of fashion. I think that depends on... No, no, that wasn't a question. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, does she have good clothes? Like... I don't like any of Miranda's outfits. You didn't? No. Maybe the one in Paris when she's got like the cool fur poncho going oh, on yeah, yeah, and yeah. the sunglasses. Yeah, that's... But I don't know. Eh. I love when Miranda says, is there some reason my coffee isn't here? Did she 
die or something? <laughs> Emily, Emily, Emily. Like, just call me Andy. <laughs> and, oh, sorry, this one's a bit long, but it might actually be my favorite. And I, I need to learn this off by heart because it's just incredible. Mm-hmm. Okay, stay with me on this. Mm-hmm. I need 10 or 15 skirts from Calvin Klein and make sure we have Pier 59 at 8 tomorrow. Remind Jocelyn I need to see a few of those satchels that Mark is doing at the Pony. And tell Simone I'll take Jackie if Maggie isn't available. Did DeMarchelier confirm? Get him on the phone. And Emily? Yes? And Miranda looks her up and down. That's all. Demon, demon. Did DeMarchelier confirm? (laughs) I have Patrick. (laughs) Yeah. I would love to work with someone called Patrick. Oh my God. Just to say, I have Patrick. There's obviously that iconic quote where they're discussing what they're going to do in the next like edition. Um, and one of the team members is like, well, we, you know, florals are really popular. There's loads of people doing, you know, fashion pieces about florals. And she goes, florals for spring? Groundbreaking. Whoa. There's also the quote when Miranda, and I love this, and I don't know if you picked up on this, is when they go to the benefit and... Miranda hates Jacqueline Follet and um, Jacqueline walks in. She's like, oh, you brought Jacqueline. And she's like, surprise. <laughs> surprise. And surprise. I love it. Jacqueline. Oh, I can't even do it. Jacqueline. 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 Oh, Jacqueline is here. Surprise. <laughs> she's like, oh, bye. I hate you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. She's brilliant. She is brilliant. But I think you cannot award best quotes to any other line than the one that we are about to say and it's not even a line it is a full-on monologue it is and i'll try and say it like the quickest way possible oh honey take your time it's the one where andy's laughing about the belts honestly find a guy who makes you laugh like andy laughs at belts (laughs) Seriously. So yeah, it's when they're in the fashion cupboard and Andy is like writing notes. She's getting used to this stuff. And Miranda's like going through all of these rails and being like, oh God, what do we even have here? And she picks up like this taffeta dress. It's kind of hideous, but they love it. Yeah. And uh, her assistant holds up two belts and goes like, I mean, we've got these, but they're, they're so different. Yeah. And Andy laughs. She's they like, all turn and look at Andy slowly. And Andy takes a minute to realize that they were just staring at her. Yeah. Do you find something funny, basically? And and she's like, oh, no, you know, it's just like these belts look exactly the same to me. And, you know, I'm still learning about this stuff. And anyway, here's the spill. So Miranda's like, this stuff? Oh, OK, I see. You think this is nothing to do with you. You go into your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. But what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue. It's not turquoise. It's not lapis. It's actually cerulean. And you're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns. And then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed cerulean military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. (laughs) And then cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. And then it uh, filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you, no doubt, fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when, in fact, you're wearing the sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. (laughs) Mic drop, Miranda Priestley. And it was at that point Andy knew she fucked up. Yeah. (laughs) Her soul just lifted out her body. I have to go now. My planet needs me. (laughs) You would hand in your resignation on the spot. Definitely. And maybe poo. (laughs) (laughs) That'll be your resignation. We need a brown skirt. We need a brown skirt. (laughs) Coming. (laughs) It's so bad. Uh, Emily, that was incredible. Thank you. That was Oh my God, I felt like she was in the room. I got goosebumps. She's terrifying. Sorry, I was just so lost in that performance. I've actually just lost my place. Um, Right, should we move on to our next topic? Details of your incompetence do not interest me. (laughs) (laughs) Right, so the Devil Wears Prada, can we discuss... Firstly, what we have to discuss is kind of like the fat shaming that is in this film. Like there's people 
weighing almonds Mm -hmm. in this even nigel says to andy when she's going to get her lunch on the first day "Mm, you know that cellulite is one of the main ingredients in corn chowder what what soup is the healthy option for lunch for me and also when they're at the benefit emily's got that really bad cold and she's like an incubus flu virus virus or something Something. that miranda calls her and and he's like oh my god you look really thin she's like thank you it's the diet i'm doing like whenever i feel faint i just eat a cube of cheese and uh i'm one stomach flu away from my goal weight (laughs) oh you know when she's like told to go and get that steak from the the restaurant yes that steak arrives, I mean, for a skinny girl place, that's yeah. a real, like, fat steak. A Fred Flintstone steak. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No one is eating that and staying awake past 2pm. No way. Like, that is absurd. Do you think maybe that was Andy being a bit passive-aggressive? Like, I'm gonna get Miranda the fattest steak and she's gonna feel so lethargic for the rest of the day maybe I can go home early yeah how strategically places fluffy poncho on her chair <laughs> until fall asleep <laughs> and, and an absolute waste when she throws it in the sink and smashes the plate oh my god it have it for lunch kind of delicious I mean I know it's 11 30 but hey that just means you can eat it now and then have second lunch in a couple of hours <laughs> oh, I love second lunch oh yeah that's why we couldn't work in fashion <laughs> um the second thing I wanted to discuss was obviously that it's such a toxic work environment I mean I'm freelance so I kind of get to choose who I work with which is like the absolute a dream joy of my work yeah the joy of being an adult is you can like choose who you want to spend your time with and who's worth your energy and where you want to be away from. Yeah. If you're applying for a job and it says fast paced work environment, run. Yes. Go on LinkedIn, find someone else. <laughs> and Andy has it doubly tough because it's not just the people she works with that are toxic. She has the worst group of friends and the worst boyfriend i'm sorry there's just so many opportunities where they could have shown support or empathy and they give none of it like andy meets them for dinner brings out these amazing presents like a bno phone clinique products an amazing mark jacobs bag they all take the products not a single one of them says thank you and then on top of that when the dragon lady starts calling on the phone they all play a game and hide the phone from andy and andy's like oh my god like fuck off like this is my job give me my phone exactly like you can have stand there with your opinion and be like oh my god it's crazy where you're working but you can't like behave like that nate to me just seems like a bit of a man child if that makes sense oh my god he just seems so set in his own ways and i don't like the fact that he's like i miss the old andy i wouldn't care if you were a stripper just like do it with integrity and it's just like absolutely shut up like you know people who like very anti everything it's like no like it's not bad to like level up in your life i just feel like he was just so egotistical himself she was so supportive of him and he was not supportive it was the birthday scene that really like pushed me over the edge yeah okay sometimes grown-ups have professional commitments that prevent them from attending a birthday party like shit happens yeah and she brings him you know the cupcake with the candle and he just stomps off like a petulant child it's ridiculous ridiculous yeah also didn't he give you like gordo in 15 years vibe yeah maybe it's just the hair yeah i mean nate doesn't look bad but he could have more potential you know yeah if he like rushed up he needs a makeover like andy completely no me gusta (laughs) sorry actually just while we're talking about the friends did you notice there's a couple kind of like i felt like nods to the princess diaries so Mm. andy's female best friend is called lily Oh, yeah. Just like Mia's best friend, Lily. Okay. And also there's the scene where uh, there's kind of like a bit of a montage where um, Miranda's getting Andy to do like a million tasks. And she's like, oh, can you check the brakes in my car? And it cuts to Andy driving a convertible around New York. And she suddenly has to brake because a bus, I think, is, is like crossing her and that was really reminiscent of the scene where um me is driving through san francisco oh. and has to like pull the brake and then the whole thing goes. and yeah it just uh, reminded me there's a bit at the beginning where andy's walking into runway for the first time and andy asks who miranda is i'm like you knew what you were interviewing for like not only does andy want to get into journalism but she's literally interviewing at runway like should you not do some basic research and know who the potential boss is gonna be yeah that is the very least bit of research you do yeah it's like showing up in vogue not knowing who anna wintour is like 
Doesn't it kind of annoys me that in the old days, like people would just turn up at any job and be like, "Yep, you're hired." And now it's like you got to have a master's, you've got to have twenty bachelor degrees. Yeah, you've got to do like ten tasks. You got to give the company like all your best ideas, and you have to give them a DNA sample. Yeah, and then you got to do a four month internship for free. Yes, and you still won't get the job. Yeah. I do also want to say that the twins are brats. Like mm. Miranda has, you know, she's obviously neglected them, so they're just kind of brats. Yeah, you know when she asks Andy to go and get like the unpublished Harry Potter script. Yeah, if I was Andy, I would have ripped out the last page of that script <gasps> and put them on the train and be like, "Yeah, <laughs> how would they know?" That is incredible. I feel like that TikTok. How would they know? They wouldn't know. Yeah. How do they know? They wouldn't know. (laughs) Okay, so now we're going to do trivia. (laughs) Cue the anxiety-inducing music. (laughs) Maybe we need some of it. Okay. What is the name of the publication company that owns Runway Magazine? Is it Elias Clark? Correct. Yes. I'm smart. I didn't have that written down. I just kind of, I could kind of see it. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Cool. Can you tell me what cheese was in Nate's grilled sandwich? Yes, I can. Yarlsberg. Yes! I'm smart. And it was eight pounds worth. That's a lot of cheese. That's a lot of cheese. Oh, I could really go for eight pounds of Yarlsberg cheese right now. (laughs) Delish. And that's why we're not working at Runway. (laughs) In the opening scene, Nigel asks if someone's eaten a what? You know, they're panicking. Miranda's arriving early. Oh, He's oh. kind of like been like, well, who's that? Like, are we doing like a sad before and after piece I don't know about? Yes. And then he's like, has someone eaten a... Is it an onion bagel? Yes. I'm smart. Yes. And then Annie's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, an onion bagel sounds delicious. Is that an, a bagel with like fried onion in it? Must or is be. that bagel with onion flavoring? In in yeah. Must Both be like... sound great. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Sign me up. Mm-hmm. Who has to be seated at Miranda's table during the Paris event? Has to be seated. Yeah, because the husband's no longer going to be there. So Miranda asks Andy to put someone at her table. Is it Jacqueline Follet? No. <laughs> Details of your incompetence do not interest me. It's Snoop Dogg. Oh, wow. I know. They can trade sunglasses. (laughs) Um, Okay, so on Andrea's first day, she gets a call at what time in the morning? 6.15. Yes. I'm smart. Yes. Yes. Which is honestly horrendous. Like, what yeah if you had that job you would need your clothes ready the night before oh no you need to sleep in your clothes <laughs> that's true like <gasps> okay ready to go <laughs> yeah put my clogs on out the door uh, uh, <laughs> clogs are in now so there's probably people in fashion who do that <laughs> what famous designer can be seen greeting miranda during paris fashion week he's very very tanned versace is a girl um is it oscar de la renta Oh. You were close to the first time it begins with V. Valentino. Yay! Yay! I'm smart. The other fashion is <laughs> after all. So Andy is a size six. Yeah. So according to Nigel, that makes her the new... Is it 14? Yeah. <laughs> I'm smart. Oh, gosh. For God's sake. I know. Uh, I don't understand that logic. Is I that... think a zero is a six. Oh, so that must mean I'm a size two. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Um, where does Emily tell Andy to leave the book? She tells her to leave it on the table with the flowers. Yes! I'm smart. She has to go past the cupboard and there's like three tables with different flowers. Yeah. It's like, oh, for God's sake. I know. I bet Emily did that on purpose. Exactly. Yeah. My final question to you. How many brothers does Nigel have? You know, he used to pretend he was going to soccer practice, but was really going to sewing classes sewing class. and reading runway under his... Covers. But covers with a torch. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. Three. Details of your incompetence do not interest me. Six brothers. Wow. Mm. So the Von Trapps. <laughs> he wishes he could make them the outfit. <gasps> yes. Out of curtains. Oh my God. Okay. My final question to you. What action means catastrophe in Miranda standards? The purse lips. Yes. I'm smart. So it's like one nod means good, uh-huh. two nods means very good. Yeah. There was only one time, it was Tom Ford in 2001. And that was a smile. And that was a so, smile. Yeah. Which meant like amazing or yeah. something. 
Yeah. And then an absolute no-no is the pursed lips. Yeah. Ice woman. So is that it? No more questions? That's all. (laughs) Another fantastic film. Leaving us a review on the podcast would mean more to us than Emily getting Valentino dresses in Paris. (laughs) She'll have to get them taken in, of course. Yeah, of course. (laughs) You know, we would just love it so much. I mean, if Uh, you don't, we're going to be angry and like throw our phone into the fountain. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, leave us a review. Tell us what you like. Feel free to follow us on Instagram at HeyNowHeyNow. Follow us on all major podcast platforms and just Stay with us because we have many, many more films to deep dive into. That's all. Oh, Miranda's calling. We've got to go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Bye guys. See you later. See ya. Have you got the Hermes cigars? (gasps) 